Hello, I'm Tom Scoley from Pole Fishing Magazine and I'm joining Nick Palmer today from Real Ideas. And what he's demonstrating to me is his Clever Claw Mark II. Um, now as you can see, it's a, it's a very sort of clever invention as the name suggests. And it's bas basically allowing Nick to feed pellets on the long pole in what is actually quite a stiff breeze as you can probably hear, uh, while he's fishing 14 and a half metres with both hands free. So it's a system that's sort of proven, isn't it Nick? It's been on the go for, for quite a while, but I know you have made some improvements to it. Yes, you know, there's, there's uh, several thousand anglers now using the Clever Claw. There was, as you say, it's the Mark II, so yep. it's, it's a wider, it's a V-shaped arm giving support on both sides of the pole. Right. So you get a lot more stability. Yep. And as you can see, I'm able to load my catapult, fight out over my pole tip. I can just swing the bait over. I just tend to hold on to the claw because it's Spring yeah. release when I push down. Of course. Well, it's working really well. I mean, quite literally, all, all you've got there is obviously the butt of the pole um, resting in the claw, and then you're just supporting it with your knee, aren't you? That's correct, yeah. And I mean, yeah. I suppose you can do that at any length, can you, Nick? Depending on what height you set the claw at. Yeah, yeah, I invented the claw to help people long pole fish, but you could be firing bait, lifting up and down with your, just lift your heel yeah. to lift your legs so you can tease your bait up and down. The, the, the beauty of this setup is it does automatically release, doesn't it? That's right, yeah. At any point in time that I decide that I want the pole back, now in my control, now yeah. whether that's when I get a fish on yeah. or I just decide that I want it back in my control, I push down and it springs undone. That's brilliant. So I just turn, push together, that's engaged the claw and it's that upward pressure from your pole keeping it firmly locked. Got you. It's as simple as that then, really. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, it's one stainless steel spring. Yeah and four teeth and when you relieve the upward pressure the stainless steel spring can push the teeth apart and flick it through 180 degrees instantly. Definitely. In terms of attaching this to your box or whatever setup you've got, is the claw supplied with a, with a, a simple sort of bank stick, bank stick size thread so you can just attach it to whatever sort of box attachment you want? Is that, is that roughly That's right? exactly that. A lot of anglers do ask that. Um, what's the thread? Will it suit my fishing equipment? And I say well, I would have been daft to have not made it as a standard fishing th thread, which is 3.8 BSF. Yes, yes. And then you choose what bracket and what bank stick, you know, depending on what you've got in your kit or what you're going to buy. Most of the major companies have got a universal range of, of attachments, so you can, uh, That's right, you have, can pretty yeah. much fit it to any seat box you want. So what happens now then, Nick? Obviously, you've, well, you've hooked into a fish. Yeah, I've hooked uh, into a fish. I'm just letting the uh, Clever Claw do the work. I'm just going to flick a bit more bait out there. So the fish is on, yeah. push down with my elbow, claw's Springs released. Off. And that's that spring mechanism you talked about, isn't it? Releasing. Yeah, stainless steel spring just puts it through 180. You can bring the fish back. I'm going to bring it, bring it back to about 11 metres, something like that. I'm just going to pop the claw back on. All right, so you can actually use it to support your pole midway back and loose feed while yeah, the fish is on. That's right, yeah, that's right. I've still got my hands free. Flick a bit more bait out, just to keep them interested. Dip down with my arm again. This time I can bring it right back. That's brilliant. That's my number four section there, so I'll just pop that back on, just being of course, I suppose the fact that you've got a fish on and there's pressure on the elastic keeps pressure That's on it. the claw so it stays, it stays locked. That's exactly it, Tom, yeah. So I can fire some more bait, just keep me interested. Uh, just... Good old fish as well, that one, isn't it? It's a big fish. Yes, there are lumps in here. Double figure. I think the last one I had was... Uh, it's eight been ten pound, pound plus, eight, it? was yeah. it? Yeah, eight to ten pound, definitely. One looks even bigger. I'll, have to, oh, I'll have to bring my uh, bigger net next time and come, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lovely fish. Flipping neck, Nick. Just, just lift that right up. Blinking neck, that is ten pound, isn't it? It's a nice looking fish. Cracking. Another beautiful fish out the Glebe fishery. Pop it straight back in. 
Lovely job, Mick, that. And he's away. That was a lovely fish, that was, Nick. I noticed you've got um, something around your pole there. What's that? Well, that's my twister pole rig hookups. All right. And what does that do? Well, instead of people stretching their elastic out like this and hooking onto the bottom of the section, yep. which if there was a split there, the hook could run up it with a strong elastic. Yep. What these do, you just hook your hook on them, like so, without an elastic pulled out. To, when oh, you I want see. to start fishing, you just twist those little two little loops apart, right. take it off, put it down, start fishing with that section. And what happens if you want, um, want it down here, if you've got a deeper rig? We use different sizes. Oh, In right, every okay. pack, there's seven different sizes, ranging from your shortest rig that you could ever imagine using, yep. going right down onto the biggest red colour, which right. goes right down onto your number four section. Does it really? That's so it doesn't matter how, how deep your rig is, you've got a, a twister thing that, that'll, uh, that'll suit it. That's exactly that, yeah. Oh, I so, see, yeah. What's that? Two and a half foot, yep. something like that. So, and there's one that's accommodating... Five foot, isn't it, probably? Yeah, something maybe even six foot. Again, same thing. Yeah. Just give it a twist, put it down on your bait tray or whatever, fish with that rig. That's you, brilliant. You want to go back to your shallow rig, you just pop it around your pole, give it a twist, and each one is made from durable, non-perishable nylon. Right. They're not elasticated, but because you twist them together, together, like so, yep. each one, you see each one slides a couple of feet. Got you, yeah. So yeah. this will accommodate this brown one will accommodate a rig of about five foot, probably up to about seven foot. Right, brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. And how do I get hold of some of them if I wanted some? at the moment from my website. Lovely, and that's Real but Ideas? It's www.realideas.eu. .eu. Yeah. Brilliant. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to use this shallow rig again. I just want to show everybody that you get people saying that my pole's a bit of a beast at 16 metres. Yeah. So I'm just going to pop another pellet on. I use these little bander baits, which are pretty commonplace, aren't they? Yeah, they're nice. I've made yeah. them at them, don't they? I think. Yeah, so that's that uh, banded on there on a little hair rig. What I'm going to do, I'm going to ship this out. Obviously, you were fishing 14 and a half, but there are, are times like when the fish back off and you want to push out to 16 metres. Yep, yep. And if the weather conditions dictate, you'll see me fishing at 11 with a clever claw. Yeah. You know, if it's too windy for 13. So you can come shorter as well. I mean, 11 metres is about the shortest you'd recommend, though, you were saying, weren't you? Yeah, uh, unless you're using one of these other setups, which we'll right. have a look at. We'll look at it a bit, yeah. Right, so 14 and a half, just hook the clever claw on there. If you want, you can actually just, while you're messing about doing this, you can just lock it. Spin right. it. That won't release on you anymore while you're messing about. Put right, another okay. section on like that. Right, so, so you have got that security then. If, if you do want to lock it in place, it's just a little spindle exactly. on there that you, that you spin around and that, that holds it there. Exactly. So I'm going to undo it because I could get a take at any second. Yeah. But because I'm going to 16 metres, you'll see that I'm going to have a bit more droop on the pole. Yeah. So what I'm going to do now, I'm actually just going to crack off that bank stick. Just lift the pole tip up a bit. Simple as that. Lock it back up. And that's me fishing 16 metres. So, how much is it going to cost me if I wanted to, to pick up one of these? Uh, they're 24.99. And where's the best place to get them from? At the moment, my website. Yeah. Um, you know, we are looking to get it into retail again in the future, but that's uh, at, the, at the moment for my website is the yep. best place. And what's your website? It's www.realideas.eu. Brilliant. I mean, obviously we've talked um, briefly that you can use the, the clever claw on, on most seat box setups, but what about if you like to fish from a chair? Is that something that, that you can do as well? I've been asked many times and that's why I got myself a, a fishing chair and these uh, set up that we can look at in a minute. Yep. That suits the men, fishermen, ladies, uh, anybody who wants to fish from a chair. Really? So you can quite literally rig the clever claw up on a chair or, or a seat box? Yeah, yeah, providing the chair's got uh, brackets, uh, legs that you can put brackets on. Yeah. Uh, very similar setup here, but uh, but on the chair. I mean, of course, 
the great thing, I think we've already mentioned it when we talked about seat backs, but the fact that it does just literally screw into any bank stick means that it quite literally will fit onto any system, won't it? It will fit on any system and I have known people who actually put it on bank sticks and then just put a, a, a re-roller and the bank stick with a clever claw in the ground. Really? Yeah, for, not for 16 You can even, meters, even do it on a camping stool if you want to. I'm sure you could, uh, <laughs> there'd be a way of figuring that out, yeah. Brilliant. And then there's uh, the setup, uh, another setup from a seat box, but using a bump bar or spray, ah, right. spray bar, which So people... you won't even need to rest it on your legs? No, no, there's a lot of people don't want to sit with a pole on the legs. It's more of a match fishing uh, technique. Yeah. Somebody who wants to do a bit of pleasure fishing, or there are occasions when I use it on a bump bar or spray bar, and that's when I'm uh, river fishing with flat floats. Brilliant. I want to keep the pole still. So it really can do everything? Yeah, pretty versatile, to say the least. Obviously, Nick, you just showed us what the clever claw can do for people wanting to fish a long pole, but this is a very different application for it. You're fishing a feeder here, aren't you, with this? That's right, Tom. Yeah, I designed it for long pole fishing. Didn't design it for this use. Didn't even know it could do it. And I was at the NEC show. Guy came by, he said, that clever claw is brilliant, mate. I said, yeah, it takes all the weight of the pole off you. He said, I don't use it for pole. At first, I thought I was talking to somebody a bit daft, and then he came over. I said, how do you use it? He said, for rod fishing, mate, feeder fishing. So, of course, I use it like this now. You need one of these method feeder rests. Yeah. The reel goes in front of the rest yeah. to deliver the upward pressure that keeps the claw locked. Got you, got you. So, and when a fish gets hold of it, I suppose it's very, very difficult for it to pull out simply because all the weight's there and that's gripping the butt, isn't it? That's right, yeah, because when the rod goes round, what happens is, is the handle tries to go that way, which yeah. actually makes the teeth lock even harder. Got you. So, when I do get a fish on, I reach for the seat, real seat, I give a quick flick with the wrist, the claw's released, and then I'm into the fish. Brilliant, brilliant. They're on it. Yeah. There we go. There we go. So Quick. that, that feed has that's gone round now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, there's, a, there's a fish on that and that's there's just holding fish. it in place. That's holding it? it in place. I mean, that's really going now, isn't it? Right, now I need to release the claw. And mm, we're in. Lovely job. Yeah, it's Some just, big old fish in it's here. It's going to be one of the lumps again, I think. This is, uh, yes, it's a heavy fish. I suppose. It really is an in vogue method at the moment, you know, obviously you're fishing a little cage feeder today, but the method feeder, pellet feeder, etc, it's something that a lot of people are doing, and this, this kind of thing, it's just going to give them that extra security, because there's nothing worse than seeing 100 quid with a rod and 100 quid with a reel disappear. That's right, Tom, yeah. Well, we've seen, I've seen it all now, Nick. Not only can you use a clever claw to help your fish get big long lengths of pole, but you can use it to, uh, to act as a very, very good feeder rest, and I mean, in today's sort of... Uh, current climate where you know these sort of self-hooking methods are so popular like the method feeder, pellet feeder etc you know it really is a, a great commodity to have because you know there are a lot of rod and reels get lost every year at the end of the day aren't there? That's right I've met I don't think there's many anglers that you do this type of fishing that haven't had their rods pulled in. No I think you're right you know and uh, the nice thing is you demonstrated, you know, the harder that fish pulls, the more it locks up the clever claw, isn't it? That's so, right, um, yeah, yeah, I suppose so. That's another application, once you've got the fish in the net, you can use it to, to hold your rod in place while you unhook it, can't you? Yeah, the nice fish anyway. It's a lovely fish to finish on, isn't it? Another big yeah. mirror. They're is lively, it, aren't they? They're so it, fit, these fish. He's itching to get back in the water, isn't he? He is, isn't he? Another nice yeah. fish, though, sort of six, six pound, is it probably? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Well done. What a lovely, lovely way to end the day.